So what's going on guys? My name is Violent. Welcome to Grit Zombies. Today, we're going to be talking about my top 5 reasons why I think Grief 2.0 could happen. And more importantly, these reasons are reasons that anybody could assume that this might be possible moving into the future. So whether we get Mob of the Dead as our first map or not, this information should remain true into the future. Drop a like if you go on to learn something and subscribe. Let me know in the comment section if you're new. And if anything sparks an idea, hit me up over on Twitter, at GrizzViolent. It's the best place to keep talking zombies. But Mob of the Dead does play a big factor here, and that's primarily because it's on the topic of discussion on anybody's mind as to what the first map's going to be at launch. The evidence of the sixth comic and how it ended is where primarily this all comes from. That's why Mob of the Dead is so important. Now, in Black Ops 3, a lot of us have always wanted a PvP mode. This type of mode is becoming very popular. And the first thing that we're going to discuss in my top five reasons is the 10-year anniversary for zombies coming up. I feel like this is a very important thing and a big deal for Treyarch because they set the standard all year long and in the duration leading up to their next title. We just had another update for Black Ops 3, so it shows you how much Treyarch cares, and if you go back and play, this is new gameplay that you're seeing right now, the sound design is absolutely amazing. So they've spent the entire time updating the current experience and making it the best it can be, and Black Ops 3 right now is on point. I recommend just go back and play a game on the Giant, you're going to really enjoy it. But the 10 year anniversary coming up is definitely the number one top reason I think Grief 2.0 could happen. The second thing I want to discuss is the rise in Battle Royale modes. This is becoming very popular and also introduced in the Call of Duty nature over on Call of Duty Online, who's being hosted right now by Raven Software. Raven Software is the developer of Modern Warfare Remastered, and they've been helping all of these companies as backup whenever they need more help and assistance. So, we have the nature of Battle Royale already ingrained in Call of Duty, but in the online experience over in China, so that's where it's at being tested. So this could easily be introduced someday into Call of Duty. And right now that research is being just tested over there. And we'll get that research and how we can implement it into the worldwide version later on. So Battle Royale, like games like PUBG, Fortnite, these are big modes. And they're introducing new game modes all the time. I think Fortnite just came out with a 50v50. And apparently it wasn't that great on console. But... It was, uh, nonetheless, they're trying to innovate, and this is something that could easily be coming, and Grief 2.0 could be a part of that. I don't think it would be on the scale of mass servers with people going against each other and zombies, but I think it's more likely to see somewhat of a 6v6 or an 8v8, where Team Deathmatch or Domination or even Capture the Flag is a game type where zombies could come after you and take your score down, and that would be a PvP option. That could be possible for Grief 2.0, it just depends how Treyarch wants to go about it. But one that I felt deserved a position on this top 5 was the rise in Battle Royale modes. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below on this. But we're going to go right into number 3, and that is the lobby menu improvements. And these are showcases of innovation towards new possibilities in the future. We've seen this happen starting in Black Ops 2 where Grief mode was introduced. We had very limited amounts of things that we could do. But interesting enough, all the background work of the player versus player mode was there. It all functioned properly and this was an option that we had in Black Ops 2 and they never took it forward again. Treyarch continues to say that they're just not happy with it. At least these are Blundell's words. Not quite happy with what they have so far. Which resulted in Black Ops 3 not having a PvP mode and this wasn't continued even in the games preceding this with Infinite Warfare and now World War II Zombies, we still don't have a PvP mode. And of course, those guys aren't going to be the people to take it forward. It's going to be Treyarch because they're innovating towards it and they had to take a game off in order to make it probably possible. So that's why I'm saying it could happen. And one of the things that I'm leaning on is the lobby menu improvements over time. Look at this. We have weapons kits. We have consumables with gobble gums now. And these were things that weren't even possible in Black Ops 2. Back then, we just had the game of the experience, right? And we couldn't earn extra currency by playing the extra mode of grief. But that was in addition to the survival mode that we got. So since we've been teased that, 
it's not too out of the norm to think that that would be something that could come back. And I think that's what the zombies community really needs. Because the more we do the survival mode over and over again, we kind of want our own custom character and we want to be able to customize on top of having these consumables. But where that's great and that helps out Activision and the microtransactions, we want something that we can keep for ourselves. Leveling up gear such as armor, head pieces, leg pieces, if we can level those up and have a weapon level because this rank crap that we're seeing in World War II zombies where you have to be a certain rank to get certain attachments, we don't like that. We like being able to rank up certain weapons and having a weapon rank and we want that to return. But that uh, can play a big role when it comes to these lobby menu improvements and over time we've seen a progression from nothingness pretty much just starting a match to having now consumables and options to customize our loadouts, um, our weapon kits. And soon, in the future, I could see another option where that would be helping another mode in itself. The next level goes along with the 10-year anniversary. It's a big deal. So the lobby improvements are definitely going to be a big part of that. The next thing I want to discuss is the Easter egg quests aren't enough. And this is a big tendency because there's a drawback and draws players away when steps are too tedious, too difficult in the sense let me give you an example. In World War II Zombies, we got to upgrade all the Tesla guns in order to do the hardcore Easter egg. Now, a lot of players that come into this see that. Even they look at all the tutorials, and they're just drawn away. They don't even want to do it, don't even want to give it a try. And that's why the Easter egg quests just aren't enough to keep Zombies players here. And I think Grief 2.0 for sure can fill that gap. And if there's customization options within it where you can customize a Zombies character and continue to get more loot to help you become better in the PvP mode too, that will be incentive for players to come back and continue to see this as a very prosperous mode that has its shit together. One thing I do understand is that there are complications with the launch of every game. You have to get it stable first, but time and time again, as you make bigger improvements, aren't the servers getting better too? So it's always a question I have in the back of my head that the money that they're making, aren't they investing that into themselves to make their own stuff better so we don't have as many problems at launch because even at the beginning of Infinite Warfare it was horrendous moving forward and then it got better but World War II Zombies it was the same story so I think we'll even see somewhat of a launch that's shaky again when Treyarch comes around here in 2018. But one thing I've always appreciated about Treyarch is that they try their hardest with zombies especially this is where we get the most care uh, to get things fixed as fast as possible and they provide really good patch notes and I will have you covered on that in the upcoming year as well so you should subscribe if you want to stay up to date when it comes to Black Ops 4 or World at War 2 whatever it's going to be called but it's plain and simple the Easter egg quests just aren't enough and the tendencies do draw you back when the Easter egg steps are very tedious and get in the way of having fun because having fun is the number one priority and if it's based more off skill the skill of the game more so than puzzles, that's what's going to make players want to stay, is when it's more about the gameplay and it's more fun, more so than solving a puzzle and sitting there for time and time again, um, just trying to figure it out, and maybe just different combinations, but you're, you're just solving a cipher or some bullshit. That's not fun. When you think of Exo Zombies, because I come from a time when Exo Zombies was popping, uh, there were this platform jumping, and if you were a part of that, you know, the platform jumping was crazy. It brought a new element to gameplay. You didn't have to think too much except for how you're going to maneuver your jump, and over time you get better and better with that. So that's something I definitely want to see improvement on the main Easter eggs. You just saw right there that I got a daily challenge complete, and that rewarded me a Liquid Divinium. So that has been improved as well in Black Ops 3. They definitely are trying to improve upon improvements that we're probably going to see in Black Ops 4. But the last thing... And the most important thing of all is the follow-up to the HQ Custom Soldier. What do you guys think about that? They're going to have to follow up with the social space, and this is something that Infinity Ward didn't have to deal with, but since Sledgehammer brought it to the table, we're all used to it, and now it's going to be accustomed and ingrained into the Call of Duty experience. I think the follow-up for the HQ Custom Soldier is going to bring a whole other level and dynamic between zombies and the social space, and that's something I think will connect with Grief 2.0 and the customization factor working with zombie crates or zombie supply drops. Let me know what you guys think of this top five reasons why Grief 2.0 could return and maybe I'll do another video like this 
coming up in the near future. But I'll see you guys next time. Be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you then. Final one out.